Welcome to City Church YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Michael Anthony Stevens on the behalf of my wife, Pastor Sharon, and all of the saints and friends of City Church Huntersville, North Carolina. We welcome you to another dynamic preaching, teaching broadcast. These next few moments promise to be a blessing in your life. And perhaps it will be a blessing to those that you share this with. It is our endeavor, our dream, our goal that you know more about the gospel, that is the good news of Christ Jesus. May his kingdom come and his will be done. I want you to sit back and hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says that God sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I want you to know that there's nothing too hard for God. As you hear these sermons, as you hear the word of the Lord, whatever the situation, circumstance, dilemma, I want you to know one thing. There's nothing too hard for God. In fact, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And I just believe just the fact that you're here today listening to another great and dynamic sermon that God will bless, God will heal, God will deliver. We'll be back in a few moments. I want you to enjoy the word of the Lord. And again, thank you for joining us. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 says, Now this I declare unto you and praise you not. That you come together, look at this, not for the better, but for the worse. That your services aren't helping you, they're making you worse. Why are the services worse? He tells them, first of all, when you come together in the church, Paul wasn't there. He said, I hear that there, old English, be, I'm reading from the King James, divisions among you. And even though I'm not there to see it, and I partly believe it. And there's one, one reason I partly believe it. He says, for there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. He says, it's going to take a few false folk to make the true people stand out. And when you come together, here's the next one. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before others his own supper and one is hungry and the other is drunken and another is drunken what have you no have you not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not what shall I say to you shall I praise you for this I praise you not for I have received of the Lord that which was delivered, which I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, in the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. For as often as you eat this bread, and you drink this cup, you announce what Jesus did on the cross until he come. I want to preach just for a few minutes. Don't stop talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't stop talking about Jesus. We've got to keep announcing this. We've got to bring it up. Amen. Father, bless us now 
We come against the spirit of timidity. We come against the spirit of fear. Oh, God, give us strength to come out of the closets. Everybody else has. And to stand on your word and to declare your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. The announcement, don't stop talking about Jesus. The church at Corinth, I've often said this. Um, I wouldn't name my church Corinth. Everything that could go wrong in a church went wrong in the church at Corinth. Amen. If I, someone pointed, if, if I was appointed to a church and they had 10,000 members and the name of it was Corinthian Church of God in Christ, my first order of business would be to change the name because uh, the, the title matters. And the, the Corinthians, they, they fought. They were a church full of fighters. I know we don't have any Corinthians here. They didn't believe that Paul should be supported. They were quite liberal. They, the Corinthians boasted because they were the tolerant church. They were so tolerant that they had a man in there married to his uh, stepmom. And the church, the church had no problem with it. Paul said, you said you are puffed up. So there is a man said, your immorality is legendary. So it hadn't even been mentioned among the Gentiles in that one has his father's wife. And says, and you are not puffed, you uh, have not mourned, but you are proud uh, of your tolerance. He says, listen, you, you, you can't allow this in the church. And I know that we're in a day now where in big cities like Charlotte and uh, it's, it's in Raleigh too and everywhere now, you get, you get the message, you get the message from so many that you're being judgmental and mean and unloving and uncaring when you bring up <clears throat> standards and uh, living right. But let me tell you, uh, God has called us to holiness. The Bible says, and the grace of God, which hath appeared unto all men, teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live righteously, soberly, and peacefully in this present world. That's what grace teaches. We, I thank God for grace. But in addition to grace, we need standards. It, have you noticed in our country, most poverty is tied in America now. This is not true in the world, but in America, most poverty is tied to our behavior. It's the consequences of our behavior. Uh, a decision to either uh, play the field or to do something that we shouldn't do that robs us of educational opportunities, job opportunities, all kinds of things. There's a breakout right now of... Uh, of, uh, it's popular now, I guess, uh, for us to go in the, the, the direction of the world, but we're making decisions that's going to affect our upward mobility, going to affect our ability to get into certain companies, certain jobs. We're doing things that hurt us. Amen. And, and, uh, and we blame it on the devil, but many times it is because we have abandoned standards. Amen. And, and uh, 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 the younger they are, the better they are. we got to put standards in people. We've got to talk to our boys about pulling their pants up. Amen. We can't, we, we can't afford to ignore it. You, you, you travel like I do. Everywhere you go, you see the, the, uh, what is happening as a result of just letting standards go laxed, laxed. And likes and and if you and if you will notice, you don't see this amongst a whole lot of other people like you see it amongst us. They just did a survey the other day, and and this was a I think it was a, a, John, a Gallup poll was it a Gallup study? We did a survey of a uh, hundred and twenty thousand men. Now that's a large survey. That's a large. Normally when they do a survey, the sample is about a hundred. A thousand, a thousand or a thousand three people. 120,000 in a survey is a huge survey. And the survey showed that African-American men today are 
50 times more likely to identify as homosexual than their white counterparts. Now, it didn't say that African-American men, 50% uh, of our men are homosexual. That's not what it said. But they are 50 times more likely to identify as homosexual as their white counterparts. Now, any way you look at that, that's bad news for us. That's bad news. That, that's saying that somewhere along the way, the ball has been dropped. And I contend that if you want to find where the most egregious, you want to find the most egregious droppers of the ball, you don't have to look far. It, it's, it's not the pimp. It's not the pusher. Amen. It's the preacher. It's what we've chosen to preach about. It's what we've chosen to talk about. It's, it, it's our expert. We've become uh, experts at saying nothing well. We pick uh, subjects that won't offend because the new thing, the new thing is not to be effective. It's not to have an uh, impact. It's to get people in. It's to get people in. Don't you think that there's something wrong in the city of Houston where we have the largest church in our country. Joel Osteen has the largest congregation in America. And no one packs in 50,000 on a Sunday morning but him. But in the same city where he packs in 50,000 people, they built the largest abortion clinic in the country. In the same city where there is a church with 50,000 people. Now with 50,000 people in a church, don't you think that that church, if it had any influence at all, could have kept that huge abortion clinic from being built in that city. But no, we're swollen. We have big numbers, but we have small impact. And, 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 and we're, we're, we're moving away. Many of these services are not good. There are churches today that celebrate at least one Sunday a month or so where they have what is called oldest Sunday. So they come together in the church and in the church service play oldies, 70s and uh, uh, God, 70s R&B and the saints dress and, and dance like that in a club in a church service preacher the other day to defend the rapper who got killed it said that um, uh, people uh, uh, say I shouldn't the, the guy the preacher said they say I shouldn't defend uh, Nipsey Hussle uh, because he he cussed but then the preacher said but I got to admit I cuss every now and then and then uh, I can't defend him because he drank then the preacher said well I drink a little Hennessy every now and again and guess what happened the saints began to shout. The people began to shout and said, go ahead. And you know, I would, I would like to think that if I told you that I was cussing and drinking liquor, I would like to think that whatever the conclusion is of this sermon, I would like to think you wouldn't be here, here to hear it. I would like to think that if I'm going to get up and brag on something like that, that that should say to you that something is wrong. They call that stuff keeping it real. Why is real always now with us uh, 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 applied when we're talking about low standards? Why is it real when we're, talk of, when we're talking about vulgar things? Why is that real? Why can't real be that God is a keeper? Why can't real be that if you fall, he'll raise you up? and give you strength to carry on. Why can't real be that he is a deliverer? That used to be real. We pretend, we pretend that there's nothing to this thing. And we're almost about to put ourselves out of business. Some of these church services are not good for us. They are bad for us. The gospel of inclusion is bad for us. It's bad. What Carlton Pearson is promoting is bad for us. I said today in leadership, those self, those uh, smartphones, smartphones have revealed things about us. The smartphones have revealed that we are stone narcissists. We're in love with our own image. 
everywhere. 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 There's a Brazilian saying that says, if you want to know what a person will do, give them the power to do it. Some people who you thought were just all about God, all about the Lord. I mean, they would tell you, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. And I'm not here to look at you. I'm just here to enjoy Jesus. All of a sudden, they put their camera on that smartphone. And now, every, I'm on my way to the bathroom. I'm on my way to the dentist. This is me standing beside, you know, and, uh, and, and we'll take a picture with anybody. Anybody. They, they can be wicked, and there you go. Something is wrong. Brother stopped me, uh, Dr. Stevens, last uh, November, and he wanted to take a picture with me. The man, I'm going to preach in just a minute. The man had on an orange or bright red jacket, a lady's jacket. Came, came down to here. Tight. I don't say I could breathe. And a big lady's brooch right here. And some tight pants. And I just preached and everybody was shaking my hand. And he walked up to me and he says, Bishop what is this? I want to take a picture with you. Will you take a picture with me? I said, no. I will not take a picture with you. I'm not dressed like that. You, you are a man, and you are dressed like a woman. I'm a man of God. What does that look like? I don't know what he's going to do. It would have been posted. It would have been all over the world in five minutes. Amen. So I said, no. And so, and I, and I told them why. You don't need to be lying. I wasn't in a hurry. But I, I, I ain't got time. To, no, no, no. I'm not going to take a picture with you because you, you don't look appropriate. There's something, there is such a thing as being appropriate. Uh, and, uh, 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 well, you can't judge his heart. Well, make sure you don't try to judge mine. See, you need to listen to me. He didn't ask you to take a picture with him. He asked me. So I told him no, and I told him why. All right? So I saw him again last week. He had on a nice brown suit. He's probably watching. And uh, asked me again, will you take a picture with me? He looked, he looked nice. I said no. I said no. I've got to talk to you. I want to talk to you. I said, because, man, there's something that God wants to do in you. But I need to talk to you. Praise the Lord. And so I didn't. And the next night, I saw why God told me to tell him no. He had on pants. Come down to here. Just as here. And they were tight. And they were black and white striped with uh, ladies' pants. Uh. Shoes, no socks, no socks. Y'all ain't saying amen. You got quiet. Let me look at you, brothers. Let me look around here tonight. I'm a holiness preacher. And you know what, preacher? I make no bones about being a holiness preacher. And I'm going to be a holiness preacher until I'm a dead preacher. Amen. And when I want to put on my stone, tombstone, holiness preacher. So, and there he is, and with a tight top, I called him, come here, come, 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 come. I said, see, brother, that's why. I said, look at you tonight. Now, I love you, man, but you, you are dressed in a manner where your outfit is, you're screaming for homosexual sex. I said, now, look at you. You are a tall, handsome, good-looking, tall, tall guy, black man, who would make some a good husband. You'd be a good father. I said, but look at you, my brother. And I asked him, I said, are you homosexual? He said, no. I said, well, you can't look like this. He says, but I love fashion. I said, but that's not fashion. Now call me next week. Now, let, where, am I, where am I headed? 
if more of us would say these things, if 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 we could if we could just get a little help, and and the rest of us would say the same thing, do you not know it would affect the way things are done? But we're living in a day now where anything goes, anything goes. And people are so flattered. Look, it, it is not a compliment to you uh, every time somebody want to take a picture with you. We are, not, we are not movie stars. We're not called to be stars. We're not celebrities. We are the people of the most high God. If someone takes a picture, fine. But that is not what we do. In the service where I was the other night, there was a Sikh in the service with a turban on his head. And the Sikh was in the service seated on the platform, a Sikh. And men of high rank took pictures with the Sikh. And they said to me that the Sikh want bishops to take pictures with him. And I said, I will not. I'm not going to. If, if I saw him on the street, that's one thing. Bless you, brother. If I saw him at the mall, that's another thing. But in a church service. Because if they were having a Sikh service, you're not, they're not going to bring us in. And, and I, had to get, I, had to get Sikh, I had to get the Sikh credit. The Sikh was loyal to his God. The Sikhs will not. It's against their religion to take off their turbans turbans amen they're not gonna take that turban off and uh, 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 and he was more loyal to his religion than we were to ours and yet in this in this selfie uh, craze day in which we live we are allowing our images our images to be put into the wrong hands as we voluntarily, now I'm not talking about photoshopping, but as we voluntarily smile with the devil. Let me tell you something. These things are not good. God didn't make you pretty for you to do that. God didn't make you handsome for that reason. The Lord didn't bless you to be able to dress up for you to, to not have any more control over your image than that. There has got to be a stand made. For without these standards, the devil will get the better of us. Paul said, your gathering is not for the good. He says, it's for the better. It's for the worse. Because when you come together, there's division. I thank God tonight that the Lord is blessing us to be one. He says, but there must be heresies among you. Yes, you will never have a church where everybody's living right. I don't pastor one where everybody's right. There will always be false teachings in the church, but the false people ought to make the real people shine brighter. We who love Jesus, we who love holiness, ought to let our voices be heard. God has no secret servants. All who serve the Lord has to step out and, and say, I'm on the Lord's side. Somebody came up with a good idea. They brought secularism into the church. They decided on the day that we have communion, it was a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea. They decided that they would have a love feast. Love feast to... Uh, uh, let that be a part of the, com excuse me, the communion service. That we would come together and we'd all sit down and dine and eat and then we would have the communion. But that didn't work. See, uh, they decided, when they decided to do this, then people came, the rich folk got there first, the influential, and they ate up all the food. So then when the poor people arrived, all the food was gone. This is what Paul meant why, when he said some are full and so some are hungry and some are drunken. That is, some are starving and others have eaten everything. And it caused a division in the church. 
And Paul said this should not be a part of the communion service. Every worldly idea, every worldly method, every corporate method can't be brought into the church. Some things have got to be prayed out. I'm, I'm not with the new secularization, this, modern, this modernization that's taking place in churches now where the sacred cross is being removed and churches look more like uh, uh, rock sound stages and, and, uh, and our services sound like more of an eagle's concert than a church concert. And, and many of our preachers now look like knockoff rock stars. They're, amen. They look like knockoff rock stars and they're standing up preaching looking like uh, Glenn Campbell. And they got the jeans, and they got their their their, their secular wear, and uh, and they they're trying to look just like praise the Lord Mick Jagger, a, 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 a rock star for Jesus. Let me tell you something. We got to be whom the Lord have called us to be. When the Lord saved me at the age of 16, what I loved about the church is that the church was different. I had to come up. Coming up in holiness reminded me of making the football team. You know what made me special, made me feel good about being on the team? Uh, all the guys who got cut, you had to make the team. That, that meant I achieved something. And I found out when I got saved that in holiness, that this thing is a highway. And, and in order to be holy, you got to come out of certain things. Got to quit doing certain things. And I liked it because it required something of me. It required that I give up something. And I found out that I was in a unique small group of young folk who were saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they were not ashamed. Do I have anybody in here tonight who's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Hallelujah. See, we got to be careful that we just don't usher in the world into our churches. It's still right to clap your hands. It's still right to praise the Lord. And I don't care what people tell you. You know, folks say, you know, all of this emotionalism. I don't get excited about this and I don't get excited about that and the other. Well, just watch the games. Just watch golf. Just watch football. Folks still get excited. They still get excited. They get excited about baseball. They get excited about basketball. A lot of them watching the game right now. Praise the Lord. Right now, they're watching the Warriors uh, and the, the Raptors play. People get excited, but what we've lost is our excitement for the Lord. And we've allowed the devil to cool us off. It's time to shift, I'm telling you. Because let me tell you something, uh, 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 Brother Justin, uh, in our, in our shut-in, I talked about it. And, and see, you're experiencing it, and, and, and we got to get ready for it. See, when you stand against, against the devil, you have to be prepared prepared for the pushback. You have to be prepared for what's coming because see, when you make your stand and then the people are around and everybody applauds, that's great. But when the lights go off and the folk go home, Satan is upset and the devil would do everything he can to try to stop you. He'll come after your family. He'll attack your health. He'll attack your money. He'll attack, he'll attack, he'll attack. But my God, if you got some folk that you can get together with, and some people who can pray and know how to get into the presence of the Lord. The, 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 the Acts chapter 4 said, and being let go, they went back to their own company. They went and found some folk that they, who they had things in common with. And they began to praise the Lord together. And the Bible said they were filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to have church when we come together for church. Because when we go out there, the devil is going to try and and destroy us but I'm here tonight to declare that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world so I'm glad and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ I'm not ashamed to be different I'm not ashamed to look like I'm saved and sound like I'm saved and, 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 and act like I belong to a church where the gospel is preached with power and authority and where the word is taught with power and authority in our last workers meeting 
Well, our theme was preaching, but it was not preaching opposed to teaching. It was both. It was both disciplines combined. And we had the teacher and we had the preacher and both delivered the word of God. And the preacher preached and the teacher taught and the people were blessed. And that is the way the word of God has to be delivered. It is not of, it is not the will of God that we pit the preacher against the teacher and the teacher against the preacher. It is the will of God that everybody do a little teaching and do a little preaching and do a little preaching and do a little teaching and we need some inspiration and some in inspiration and some intellect and we need all of these things to be able to stand against the devil for Satan is coming against us but I'm here to tell you tonight that if you stand on the word of God you're going to win every battle he said now you all have come together and you've secularized this thing. He said, this is not how you honor the Lord's body. He said, leave your dinners at home. Eat at home. Go home for that secular stuff. He said, for it was uh, delivered unto me. He says, I received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that in the same night when our Lord was betrayed, he took bread as I now do. He took bread and, and gave thanks to it, and he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this is the New Testament, in my blood and this do as often as you drink it uh, do it in remembrance of me i want to say tonight always remember jesus i know that the devil is busy i know that satan uh, praise the lord is 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 running to and fro but don't you forget about jesus because jesus is more powerful than the devil Jesus is the king of kings and he's the lord of lords. He's still the lily of the valley and he's still the bright and morning star. Yes he is. He's still the fairest of 10,000. He's the rose of Sharon and he's the soon coming king. He's still good and he's still powerful and he's still able to set your soul on fire. He's still able to lift a beggar from the dung heap. He's still able to give you joy in the midst of sorrow. He's still able to give you hope for tomorrow. And when you're down, 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 and the devil is talking to you, and he's saying that you're not going to rise, and he's saying that I got you now, just remember that Jesus was laid in the grave for three days but when the time was right God raised him from the dead we serve a God who's able to resurrect we serve a God who is able to turn things around but you got to keep your mind stayed on Jesus good God almighty the Bible said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he's trusted in thee put your mind on the Lord ah, put your heart good God almighty on Jesus Christ somebody lift your hands and just praise Jesus give him glory because the Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised somebody's going through somebody's suffering under a heavy load the Lord told me to tell you to just spend your time in the word of God for the next week just read the gospels read what he said read what he did read how he healed read how he walked on water read how he calmed the raging sea read how he fed five thousand with two little fish and five barley loaves read how he turned water into wine read how he opened blinded eyes read and read and read good god almighty and you will see the glory open up you will see power like you've never seen it before because the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord are not heavy that he cannot hear and his hands are not short that he cannot save. 
He's still a savior. He's still the healer. He's still the deliverer. And we got to lift him up as never before. Don't it make you feel better just to call his name? Don't it make you load lighter just to call his name? Every time I think about it, I feel good. Every time he crossed my mind, it reminds me that it's going to get better. It reminds me that I can stand. It reminds me that he's still able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Woo! You ought to go to just tell somebody. joining us today at the City Church YouTube channel. What a joy it is to be able to come into your home, come on your laptop, come on your iPad, your cell phone. On the behalf of my wife, Pastor Sharon, and all of the saints and friends of the City Church, I just want to say thank you. You know, today I pray that something you heard in this message stirred your heart, provoked your faith, and blessed your soul. I believe with all my heart that God sent his word, and his word brings healing, deliverance, and breakthrough. Here's what I'd like to do today. I'd like to pray with you. I want you to know there's nothing too hard for God. In fact, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The Bible reminds us that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And you know what? About 30 plus years ago, God came into my life as a freshman on an HBCU college campus. And I'm saved, sanctified, filled with God's precious Holy Spirit after all these years. Why? Because God's been faithful. He made a promise to his word, a promise to his covenant, a promise to me. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, you say, Pastor Mike, I'm a good person. I'm really a nice guy. I'm a great girl, but I just don't know Jesus and the pardon of my sins. I'd like to pray for you. And after all of these years, I've often instructed that salvation is as simple as as ABC. A, admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus lived, he died, he was buried. Three days later, he rose again. C, commit your life, commit your heart to Jesus. After those ABCs, admit, believe, and commit I believe that God comes into your life and you are a brand new creation, a brand new person in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together right now. Father, in Jesus name, I am a sinner and I want to get my heart right. I want to give my life completely to serving you. I do believe in my heart and I confess today with my mouth that Jesus is the Christ, son of God, the living one. I want to commit my life to serving him and being all that I can be as a child of God. I receive today the gift of salvation into my heart, into my mind, into my soul, that my sins would be forgiven and that I will be washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit that I may be a brand new Christian. I thank you for salvation. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you for a brand new life. In the name of of Jesus we ask and we pray, amen. My dear friend, you may not realize this, but that is the prayer of salvation. Again, it's a very simple process, simple prayer. Now, it will cost you to live this Christian life, but the Bible reminds us that greater is he that is in he, you, or greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Listen, if you're in the Huntersville, that is the Charlotte, North Carolina area, we'd love for you to visit us on Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. sharp, for a dynamic worship experience. If you can't be in the area, join us online, www 
mycitychurchonline.com. All the information is on the screen. In fact, I'd like you to email me, write me. We want to send you some information on the decision you just made to serve the Lord. Maybe you're rededicating or recommitting your life to the Lord. We want to make sure that you can grow as a born-again, committed believer. Again, I can't thank you enough for allowing us to be in your world on this day. May heaven smile upon you, and may the Lord richly bless you. I'm Dr. Michael Anthony Stevens. On the behalf of all of the saints and friends of City Church, we say welcome, congratulations, and God bless.